If you spent any time developing websites at all, I've no doubt you have used a lot of icons in your work. Icons are a very powerful way to help with your site styling, your navigation, to convey information conveniently and elegantly. And they add a little splash of pizzazz and style right where it's needed. If you're particularly savvy, you're probably using SVG icons like these, which can be resized as big or as small as you want and which have very, very small, efficient file sizes. SVG icons can also be colored, but only if the SVG path is inline, meaning it's embedded directly into your page content. If you look through Webflow's forums, you'll find that the number one recommendation for how do I color an SVG involves pulling the path out and applying your color directly. But there is a better way. These SVGs, all three of these images are the same SVG file, and it is an external SVG. It is a file stored in the site assets that is being colored after it's pulled into the page. And it is very impressive what you can do. So we're gonna have a look at how to do that. I'm gonna show you some demonstrations. I'm gonna give you access to this site so you can look at the source code directly. And hopefully this will make a lot of people very happy. A couple of years ago, I posted this request for an SVG specific element and it got a lot of traction. And the main reason was I wanted the ability to control the coloring of my SVGs while keeping them a convenient asset stored asset rather than trying to pull HTML embeds into my page. And it turns out that that has already been supported for some time. The way it's accomplished is using CSS filter effects. CSS filter effects have been around for some time. They are supported by all major browsers. However, they are not well known as a tool for recoloring things because they are a little bit complex to understand. I'm gonna show you how to get the color you want using an easy tool. I'm gonna to show you how to apply these effects. I'm gonna show you how to apply them in two ways, either with a small CSS chunk, which you can drop in your page, or using the Webflow Designer directly and applying the filter effects directly to your image element that contains, that is linked to your SVG asset. Before we go into the implementation, I'm gonna talk about where to get good SVG images. Because one of the problems you'll find is that you want to start with a black SVG icon, one that is crisp and, and well designed and you want to, of course, pick the right one for the job. So I like to use Flat Icon. Flat Icon is a great resource with a lot of icons on it. If I go under the Icons tab here, you'll notice it has a lot of colored icons, which are not going to be very useful for what we're wanting to do today. I will say, however, if I open this one in a new tab, let's say I really like this hamburger icon here, quite often, there is an alternative view of the icon. You'll see often a black and white version or a grayscale version of it. Not in this case, but in quite a few of the icons, you'll find that here's an example of one. So I can often find a colored icon and still get a black and white variation of it. But where I typically get my icons is from the black and white collection. So if I scroll down, I'll see there are two popular styles here, three actually hand-drawn black outline and black filled. If I jump into black filled here, you'll see each of these is a collection. 16 icons here, 55 here, 369 here. Many, many, many collections times over a thousand pages of collections. Every single one of these icons can be downloaded as an SVG. I'm going to show you how to do that because this is really going to help a lot with explaining where to get your source material. So I simply jump into any icon that I want and I have an SVG download option here. It'll give me the vector. I also have the ability to download specific sized pings, which is great for your fav icon for your site if you want. Um, and I can even recolor it. If I wanted to edit the icon and change the color, I can give it something different for my fav icon. For the purposes of these colored SVGs, we want to start with black. So download the SVG, download it black, and you will simply add that to your site's assets for coloring. Let's have a look at how to actually implement this. Now there are two different ways 
that I've found to color the icons that are stored in your site assets. So if I look here, you can see I've got two SVGs. I've got one SVG. I need to download another one here. I accidentally uploaded a ping. So I've got an SVG here and it is black and you can see that raw SVG here. It is bound to an image element. And here I have the same exact SVG bound, but I have colored it. This approach in this first demonstration, I'm going to give access to this site in a read only mode so that you can have a look at the exact details of how I've implemented this. This approach is using a, a chunk of CSS and the CSS is in this part of the page simply for convenient access. Normally you'd want to put it in your site head or in your page head, depending on which parts of the site you want to affect. I have a second demonstration here as well in which we do the exact same thing, exact same SVG image. However, here the coloring is not applied with a CSS chunk. It is applied directly in the designer using the filters here. I'm going to talk about how to do both of these. So let's start with the CSS chunk approach. And what we're going to do is I'm simply going to create another uh, copy of uh, image here. Let's lock this in place. There we go. I'm going to want to be able to navigate around easily, so bear with me here. So I'm going to take my example. I'm going to paste another one. Now we want a color, a target color that we're going to set it to. So I'm actually just going to pick a color from nowhere at all. I'm actually going to pick it from here. Just a nice little green. And I now have my hex value for my green. You can get your hex values from anywhere you like. I'm going to go ahead and paste that here because I want to keep a reference to it for my own convenience. And we're going to use that in a couple of different ways. Uh, now this is my target color. The basic approach that we're going to do here with the CSS is we want to create the specific filter tag needed to change this element from black to that green. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use an external tool. The external tool we're going to use is actually a code pen, bit of code written by Barrett Sundug, who did a fantastic job at understanding how to create exactly what it is we're trying to create here. Uh, we've got our we've got our hex code color here and I want to compute the filters for it. Now you can see that is the green that I selected. That is the hex code that I selected. And here what it has done is it has created and calculated the filter uh, effect needed. This combination of exact filter effects needed to create that color from black. Now no one wants to compute that manually. So it is fantastic that he has created this. You'll find other tools online as well, but I'm going to link this one simply because it works fantastically well. And this is exactly what we need is this filter tag. So I'm going to pull this out and we're going to open up the, uh, the, the CSS where we're going to embed it. Let's maximize that again and drag that out again. And you can see here in this gray area is the HTML embed. So I'm going to open the code editor. You can see here we've got a, just a style chunk. Normally you would not want this in the body of your web page. You would want it in the head. However, most browsers, specifically Chrome, which I'm using right now, handle it fine. Now I've got two classes assigned to each of these envelope icons. I've got an icon class and I also have a color class in this one. I'm going to create one called green. And as long as it has both of those classes signed at the same level, this is the CSS selector with no space in between that says it must have both of these classes. And there is my filter and that is it. So anything I apply icon and green to is going to pick up that color. Let's go have a look and see if that works. And one of the beautiful things here is I can actually see my work in the designer. Now it's already got the icon uh, selector to it. I'm going to create a new one, green. And because that was already in the CSS on the page, it is already visible in the designer, which is fantastic. And I can actually do the same thing here if I want. I could apply the color green. 
in other ways I've done it here I'm gonna say green and simply for reference I'm gonna go ahead and take that same color uh, not that color I'm gonna take this color and put it here there we go that way we've got a record of it and that is exactly how I can use CSS to color an SVG that is stored in my site assets now let's have a look at the second way of doing it because this way is even a little bit more elegant in that it stays a hundred percent in the designer my general recommendation would be use this second approach um, if you have just a few icons on your site that you're wanting to color if you have a lot of different icons you're wanting to color a lot of different colors then this CS approach may be easier you'll see why in just a second so let's go to the second demo page and we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take this example image here. I'm going to duplicate it. And let's pick another color. What color should we pick? I think we'll pick something kind of randomly blue. So let me pop up my color picker here. And we're going to see that looks fine. Excellent. We now have a blue color. And same thing, I'm going to go ahead and put this here for convenient memory. And I'm going to go back to our tool. And we're going to paste in our new RGB hex code here so that we get the new filter tag. Now, this time, instead of copying this filter and pasting it somewhere, we need to recreate this in the Webflow Designer. And this is a bit of a pain, which is why you don't want to do it to a whole lot of icons. Now, I've got a particular approach that I recommend for this. And the particular approach is to use Webflow's global CSS selectors approach. So if I were to add a color class to this, to this selector, it's going to create a combined selector and I will only be able to apply the color to that item. I would rather not do that. I actually want to be able to apply this to anything that I choose to, to, to style. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and create, and I'm gonna call it SVG blue, just for kicks. So I have created a global selector. Anything I apply that to will actually apply my settings here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on that text item for now, which is already black and that is important. So if I go down here to effects and I go under filters, I'm gonna start creating filters. And this is where things get a little bit gnarly. Let me show you both screens at the same time so that you can see what is going on. Here is the string I'm wanting to create and I need to create that exact same sequence of filter effects. So I'm gonna start with invert, and then I'm actually gonna create these in reverse because it puts them at the top. So contrast is, is there. Then next one I'm gonna say is brightness. I'm gonna set the values after I do this, and I have to click on each of these way. I'm gonna do hue rotate. I'm going to do saturate, saturation, uh, sepia, and invert is the last one. So I'm going to bring invert up to the top. It is very important that these filters be applied in exactly the same order that you see them here. Invert, then sepia, then saturate. Uh, where did blur go? Oh, there is no blur. Why is blur here? Delete blur. Invert, sepia, saturate, Q rotate, brightness, and contrast. Now we need to set the values. You can see it is white because these are all at default values. So first one, invert, needs to be 29%. Second one, sepia, 45%. Third one, saturate 22, 25%. 22, 25, 2,225. Hue, rotate 196 degrees. 
brightness, 94. And contrast, 90%. And you will see we have recreated our color. If these are out of order, we will not get this color. Now, because we set this as a global class, we can apply it absolutely anywhere we want. This class again, SVG Blue, I'm actually going to apply it right on top of my example note. SVG Blue. Now, the reason it has worked here is because this was already black. So this is a very important thing to understand, is that these filters will transform anything black into our target color. Here I'm going to transform my icon. SVG Blue. There we go. I can also do that to a ping. I can do that to a JPEG. I can do that to absolutely anything underneath it that is black. So it is actually a very powerful and flexible way to, to add branding and color to my site using stock elements without having to go through all the additional work of recoloring them every single time I'm using them in a new project. And this is now my new favorite way to style SVGs.